in the last chapter we talked about the for loop learned its sql syntax and understood some important features including its limit now we are moving on to the while loop we will see how it works and how it is different from the for loop especially when we are using stored procedures and anonymous block in snowflake in this tutorial we won't just learn the sql syntax we will also go through the different examples to understand how to fix mistake if we get syntax error we will look at the kind of error messages we might see when we mess up while loop in stored procedures with snowflake sql scripting so stick with me till the end of this video to get a good grip on using the while loop effectively we have already covered many important concept in this playlist if you haven't seen these chapters yet please watch it after completing this video the links for all the videos are available in the description section below alternatively you can also visit my medium blog page to find the sample sql script and links for each chapter along with summary this video will primarily concentrate on while loop concept in the context of snowflake stored procedures as well as anonymous block and cover the topic listed here there are other kind of loops that will be covered in the future chapter of this playlist welcome to my channel data engineering simplified for all my demonstration i will be utilizing the free trial edition of snowflake on aws make sure to adjust the video quality to 4k since all my recordings are in that resolution to speed up your learning process consider increasing the playback speed to 1.25x or 1.5x for direct communication feel free to message me on my instagram account or join my exclusive facebook group if you are interested in systematically enhancing your snowflake skill check out my premium udemy courses and please remember to hit the like button if you have been benefiting from my content and if it is contributing value to your snowflake learning journey so let's jump to our snow site so this is my first worksheet called basic structure for the while loop and this is my anonymous block and in this block we will understand how the while loop construct looks like so the primary purpose of this anonymous block is to print from 1 to 10 using while loop and if you look into this line number 12 to line number 14 is my while loop so while loop start with the keyword while and this is the condition which will be evaluated to a boolean value whether it is true or false followed by do keyword and if this evaluation turns to be a true boolean value then this set of statement will be executed and finally we have end file very similar structure like a for loop however in the for loop we did not have any counter neither we had any condition everything was implicit and provided by snowflake like any other programming language however here you have one condition and if you want you can also add multiple condition and we would check it whether it supports multiple condition or not so the counter start with one here in this condition it checks if the counter value is less than or equal to 10 if yes this dynamically create this string variable and increase the counter by 1 and then it comes back here again to check if counter value is less than or equal to 10 or not that way it goes for total 10 iteration and finally it returns let's run this anonymous block and and check the result so it has printed from 1 to 10 and we have seen the similar result for a for loop now if i have to execute the same block inside my stored procedures i can put the entire content here starting from line number 29 to line number 38 with this create or replace stored procedure block and let me create this block. so my stored proc is created and let's run this it produce the same result and if i have to really pass a variable and want to make sure that this is replaced by the variable i can so i have added this input value here so this input value is replaced here and let's see how does it work so i am going to recreate this stored proc it is recreated and this time instead of giving 10 i will give you 12 and let's see so it has printed from 1 to 12 and if you prefer to execute your stored procedures through snow sql or using legacy web ui 
then you have to make sure that your stored procedure body or your anonymous body has to be enclosed with this double dollar sign. It works here also. However, if your preferred mode of execution during development is SnowSQL or Legacy Web UI, make sure that you follow this double dollar sign. So this is my second worksheet called infinite loop and there is a specific challenge with the while loop if your condition returns true forever then this entire loop run forever and that will really cause a lot of compute credit in your environment let's start with 1000 and let's see how much time does it take so it printed quite fast with 465 millisecond now i increase the number to 10000 and let me run this block So it took 2.4 second and if I go for 100k, so for 100k it has to really produce starting from 1 to 100k and processing might be super fast but bringing the result from your virtual warehouse to the browser console may take a while. So while it is running it is important to remember that if this condition is true forever it would be possible that you will eat up a lot of credit without any real purpose. So whenever you are writing a while loop, make sure that you validate the conditional check properly. So while it is running, let me go back to query profile. So if you come to this screen, this particular query is still running and it is more than a minute that it is running. And if I click on it, here I have 100k as my counter value. If you scroll further, you can see that I have this icon here which will help me to cancel the query in case if query is running longer than expected and since it has taken quite a lot of time let me refresh it it is more than two minutes and the query is still running so what would i do i will click here and cancel the query and when i cancel the query this screen pops up and my query cancelled successfully however it says failed and if i go here it says sql execution cancelled now what would i do instead of printing the value i just commented that and i'm trying to rerun that and see what happens so this time i got my result faster so whenever you are having any kind of loop whether it is while or a for make sure all the statement inside the conditions are validated properly otherwise it will perform poorly now one thing i can also do even though my counter is running i can simply say null and let's say what happens so null is treated as a false but instead of null i can also say true if i put it true this will run forever and i have to forcefully go and cancel the query so now my query started and it will never stop because this is always true and there is no condition to make this while loop false and my warehouse will continue to consume a lot of credit so this is my query and let me cancel this query So couple of things to remember whenever you are working with a while loop, even for a for loop in some cases, make sure that it does not iterate for a very large number. And in case if your counter is not working, if I have not increased the counter here, then probably this condition will never return false. Or if you put direct true and also validate your query profile if your or your overall stored procedure is taking longer than expected. How to in the last chapter we have spoken about do versus loop and here also we are going to check quickly how this do syntax versus loop syntax looks like so either you can use while followed by do and then here you end with while or if you are using while with loop you have to make sure that this end part should always have the loop keyword so let me run this first anonymous block so result is as expected now if i go and run this while loop this is running good if i change this to loop this will fail and let's see what message it throws it says syntax error line number 5 at position 18 okay but if i do here so if it is loop it has to end with loop and if it is do then it has to end with while okay otherwise this kind of mismatch will throw an error when you are running your while loop 
This is my new worksheet called break the code and let's try to change some of the keyword, remove some of the semicolon and understand what kind of error messages are thrown when we do not write the syntax appropriately when creating the while loops. So if I just give end, let's see what happens. So it says unexpected line number eight. So it has recognized that there is something wrong in the while loop, but it did not say that mistake has happened in this. So that is one of the challenge we have experienced while working with Snowflake scripting. So let me put this keyword back. Next, I will try to remove the semicolon. So as a developer, I'm expecting the Snowflake should point like this line is having a problem. However, the Snowflake consider this entire block as a logical block and it says that there is something wrong. So make sure that whenever you are working with a while loop or a for loop, don't have a very big loop. Otherwise, it would be very, very hard for you to debug it and it will consume a lot of time. Now, let's check if I remove this enclosed bracket from this condition check, what kind of error message does it throw? So again, it says unexpected counter. This condition has to be in enclosed bracket. Otherwise, Snowflake will throw an error. The snowflake is considering this while block as a one logical block and any syntax problem within this block will generally come to either this point or probably it will come to this point right now let me put it back now if i do some mistake like instead of end if i just do ent let's see what happens again same problem it is expecting a specific keyword to see a completeness in this while block. Now, one last thing, if I do not have any statement inside this while loop, let's say what happens. First of all, commenting counter is little dangerous because it will run this loop forever, but we know how to cancel it. So we can go ahead and simulate this scenario. So it also complain that syntax error line five at position 17 unexpected greater than equal to sign. So it is expecting minimum one statement. So let's run this. However, this will run forever. So yeah, it is started running forever because I got the query ID and uh, what I have to do, I have to go back to my query profile screen and cancel that. So let me cancel this. So it is canceled successfully. So these are the couple of important scenarios we have covered and make sure that whenever you are writing a while loop or for loop, keep the code simple and easy to understand. And each of this statement should end with a semicolon. Otherwise it is hard to debug while loop as well as for loop. This is my another sheet where we will try to understand how the break and continue keyword looks like. We have already covered this in our last chapter while discussing for loop and while loop is no different it exactly follows a similar pattern so first start with a break keyword and if you look into this particular anonymous block it is again trying to print from 1 to 10 and whenever the counter value is bigger than 3 what would happen it will simply come out of this while loop and it will come to this next executable line let me try this out so it printed 1 to 3 and after 3 it stopped printing now let's understand how to use continue keyword here i have moved my statement below and counter is running at the beginning and my i change the counter from zero so what happens if the counter value is greater than three or counter value is less than seven then in that case so between three to seven it will not print anything and it will start printing from seven onward so in that case i will just use the continue and when i say continue what would happen any executable line right after this line will not be considered and the loop will go back to this part so counter is being increased here so make sure if you have a continue block your counter should be above the continue else it will go for infinite loop okay so this is one of the challenge we have it with the while loop compared to for loop so let me execute this block and show you the result so the result says one two three then seven eight nine ten eleven okay because this is less than seven that's why seven got now let's quickly understand the label part which we have seen in our previous chapter with for loop. So I am extending the same example here and this is my anonymous block where I have given this while loop as my outer loop with a name called outer underscore loop and this is called label and whenever I am saying that continue this continue will actually come to this point. So if you have a multiple if else condition or if you have another while condition you can really name where it has to jump from this place to that place so i would prefer you to try to get a more comfortness how this keyword works 
and how the code jumps from place to place. So when we are using for loop, we can reverse the loop and we can also use the for loop for cursor based variable. However, while loop does not support any keyword called reverse and while loop also does not support any cursor. So while loop has a certain advantage. Let's quickly understand if I have to add another expression, I can say and and I will say true and let's see whether it works or not. So this has worked and if I have to add another condition like or false, right? Let's see what happens. This is the advantage that you can add multiple conditions and can evaluate the condition whether the overall condition returns true or a false. This is not possible with a for loop. You have to explicitly write if condition. So while versus for has its own advantage and disadvantage and according to your business requirement, you have to pick whether you want to use for loop or whether you want to use while. So we simulated a variety of scenarios to reinforce our learning and got a deeper understanding of while loop. We also understood Snowflake scripting engine's behavior and examined the type of messages thrown in case of syntax error as well as execution errors. In the next chapter, we will discuss other type of looping supported by Snowflake SQL scripting. So be sure not to miss upcoming chapters which features a hands-on tutorial that is crucial for understanding how to write Snowflake SQL scripting. I hope you got something valuable from this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Your support not only recognizes the work behind this free content, but also helps others to discover this playlist. And if you think it can help someone else in your team, feel free to share. Thanks for watching and let's spread the knowledge and growth together.